Hi everyone, welcome back to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. For today's tutorial, we are going to be working on this braided Tunisian stitch scarf. So let's get started. Alright, so let's take a look at our scarf. This is the one we are going to be crocheting today. So it is a beautiful, what would this be? A cable braid, if you want to call it that. So it's our braided Tunisian scarf. It is definitely not for beginners. Um, I, I'll start by saying that if you know how to crochet a purl stitch and a knit stitch, and you are comfortable doing that, then go ahead and try this. Uh, I'm not gonna go over those stitches, so take that as the test see if you can or cannot complete this scarf. I won't go over them, um, so if you know how to do them, great! Then go ahead and give this a, give this a shot. It is not very difficult to do. Um, you just need to know how to do uh, this, those two stitches, and the rest of it is, is pretty easy. Um, it is a repetition of four rows. So we're gonna have one braid, and then just a regular row, and then one braid towards the back, regular row, and then just repeat. So repetition of four rows, um, and that's about it. That's, that's all I really have. You can use any yarn you want. So this is a size five yarn. So I used Wool Ease. I know this is uh, an old skein, that's why it looks this way, but it's the Wool Ease. It's a size five. I used two skeins to make this scarf. It is 60 inches long. I do have the, the uh, measurements in centimeters on the on the website, but it's 60 centimeters long by seven inches across. So it is an adult scarf. You can make it longer. I had some leftover yarn, so I, I could have made it longer. This is just as long as I wanted it though. But two skeins of woolies. You are gonna need a regular crochet hook. It does not matter what size. This is just going to be a tool to assist you while making the braids. So regular crochet hook, any size. Now here's the thing. If you're gonna be using a size five yarn, then you're gonna need an eight millimeter hook. If you're gonna be using a bigger yarn, you're gonna need a bigger hook. So a size six would be a size 10. So a 10 millimeter hook. Um, that'll make your life a lot easier. So that's what you need here. If you are gonna use a different size yarn, so let me get this out of the way, but not too far, because we're gonna use it as our, as our example while we're crocheting. So this is just a regular medium yarn. So there's nothing special about this yarn, it's just medium. I was able to crochet this just fine. Now, if you want your stitching to pop, so you want it to really be visible, use a size five hook. So five millimeter, it has to be a Tunisian hook. You cannot do this with a regular hook. So this is my Tunisian blanket hook. These are bamboo hooks I use. It's really, really long. I love these hooks. I do have a link down below if you don't have hooks and you want something like this. Um, I love them. I did have, what, two? I think the smallest one and the biggest one. I did have to file this side right here because these are bamboo um, and they are very inexpensive. I love them. Um, but I'll leave a link down below so you can check those out. You can also use any other Tunisian hook. So you can use one of these long ones if you prefer. But again, if you're using a small yarn or I guess a, a medium yarn, so this is what, Super Saver, I think? This is just a, a little piece I have lying around to make some samples with. Um, you can use a five millimeter hook for a nice tight stitch. You can use a 5.5 so that it's still highly visible, your stitching, but it is not as tight. Or you can do what I did here and use a six millimeter hook. As you can see, the stitching is quite loose, so it makes it a very light uh, scarf. Sorry, I was gonna say blanket. It makes it a very light scarf. I suppose you could make this into a blanket if you wanted to. This is a multiples of 20 plus one. So 20, 20, 20 until you have the blanket size that you want. But we're making a scarf today, so this is what, we're, what I'm gonna show you. So let's begin with our materials. Like I told you before, you're going to need two skeins of, if you're doing it thick, then wool ease. One of these skeins, let me just show you the sizing. Oh no, I dropped my hook. Okay, so it's 153 yards or 140 meters. So two of these. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea in case you can't find this specific yarn, 
you can find the um, you can get the same amount uh, a size eight millimeter hook and then just a regular crochet hook so I'm gonna use this this yarn so you can see I did have a little left over but it's it's really difficult to see it on camera so I'm just gonna use this one um, so let's get started okay so back to what I said at the beginning of the video I'm not gonna go over any of these basic stitches if you cannot keep up with the basic stitches this will be too difficult for you so practice your stitching first and then come back and try it again when you're a little more comfortable doing any of these stitches so we're just gonna start with a slip knot and chain 21 so I'll just get through this chain really quickly well I do if you want the written pattern for this scarf and I do go over the four um, repeated rows so they're they are written in detail you can find that on the website and that is down below in the description box you're gonna find a link it is an instant PDF download so you will be able to have that pattern to work with right away so we need a chain of 21 I didn't count these as I went so let me count them real fast it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Went a little over. And there we go. All right, so we're going to skip the first stitch and we're gonna work right into the second. So something I've noticed is that if you want a really nice clean edge, work with the back part of the stitches. So skip the first one and go into the second one and just start casting on. So I cast on here in the back. If it doesn't really matter to you because you can add fringe or whatever, then you can work on the front. Working these back stitches with a thicker yarn is a little more uh, time consuming, I guess. It's a little more difficult, especially because these thick yarns tend to be pretty fuzzy. So your hook kind of gets stuck on everything. But cast on, I'll see you as soon as I finish. All right, so we have cast on. And now we just have to do our return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, 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 all the way to the end. So this is just our foundation row. This row and the one we're gonna do after do not count. So they don't go into the um, four row repeat. So this is just all of our foundation work. So let me finish these as quickly as I can there we go and there we are our foundation row now let's get started with the beginning part of the pattern like I said this does not go into the four row repeat this is just gonna establish where we're going to be doing our braid so this is I guess foundation row part two so row one we're gonna repeat rows two through what is it two three four and five but so row number one we're going to work purl two um, knit stitch and two purl so purl two knit two purl so let's do that so we have purl for our first stitch and then two knit so knit knit and then two purl so there's one purl and two so there we go if you don't know how to do these so if you're still a beginner and you really want to make this scarf and you have no idea what I just did you can check out one of my other video tutorials for anything that I've done that's Tunisian except for honeycomb the honeycomb stitch does not use a Tunisian knit stitch so pick one of the other stitches practice it a little bit and then you'll become familiar with the knit stitch and the purl stitch I do tend to go really slowly in those other videos so you should be able to get a good idea for how to crochet um, both the, knit, uh, the purl stitch and the knit stitch. So practice that a little bit and then you can come back and try this video tutorial again. So it should give you a bit of a practice for the purl and the knit stitch. Anyway, moving on, let's go with the braid. So the braid consists of nine stitches. So it's three sections of three stitches a piece. So three, three, three for a total of nine stitches. So to do that, we're going to cast on nine knit stitches. So we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go, nine. And now we have to do this other side of the pattern. So it's two purl, two knit, one purl, and then the last stitch. So we have two purl, so one, two, and then two knit, 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 and then purl, and then the last stitch of the row, which is just a knit. So here we go. And there we go, we've cast on row number one. So we just have to work our return pass, and this is just a regular return pass. So yarn over, pull through two, or so it's yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two on all the other ones. So just a standard return pass. So let me pull through both of these real quick, and I'll see you when I'm at the end of the row. All right, so we have finished row number one. So now let's start row number two, and row number two is the first of the four rows that we're gonna repeat, okay? So here we go. By now, you should see the pattern setting up. So we have one purl, two knit, two purl. So that's the same at the beginning of, or in every row. So it's just the beginning part of the pattern or the scarf, I guess the, the border, if you wanna call that, I don't know, the edging border, I don't know. The stuff that's not the braid. All right, here we go. And now we are at the braid. So the braid is, here's the complicated part. So this first one's quite easy. You are going to skip the first, or not skip, I'm sorry. You're gonna work the first three stitches just as a um, knit stitch. I lost my word there for a minute, goodness. So the first three, you're gonna work a knit stitch. Okay, so here we go. We've got one, two, three. Great. Now let's go to the next three, which are right here. So it's one, two, three. Skip these guys. So skip the middle three and go into the last set of three. So one, two, three. Work a knit stitch in each of, this, of these last three stitches. So skip three, knit stitch three. So we have one, two, and three. All right, here we go. Let's leave these nice and loose here just to help us out. So let's open this up and here are our three skipped stitches. Now you're gonna need your extra hook. So here, let me move the cabinet to the side. There we go. So here's our extra hook. Now we're gonna work these three knit stitches onto this hook. Insert your hook into the stitch, and this is a knit stitch. So yarn over, and pull up a loop for one, two, and three. So here we go. And these have to be held in front of our hook like this, because we're going to twist these and pull them in front of our already cast on three stitches so that we can cut, we can make this part of the braid. So see how it loops on top of these side ones? This is what we're doing right now. So grab your hooks. There you go. And now we're going to we're going to pull the stitches off of the aluminum hook onto the bamboo hook. So from the regular hook to your Tunisian hook. So just pull them onto it, so slip them on. So there's one, two, three. And the thing with this last stitch is that it's always really loose. So if you want, like right, this stitch right here, this is really loose. If you want to tighten that up like I did in this stitch, this top one, then you're gonna to want to pull on your, on your yarn right here so that you tighten up this very last stitch. So tighten that up. All right, so there we go. And now we're at the other side of our scarf. So we have our two purl, two knit, purl, and then end. So let's go with two purl. So there's one, 
two and then two knit. So one, two, and then a purl, and then this last stitch of the row. And there we go. So now for this return pass, it's gonna be worked the same way as all your other return passes. So I'm gonna do this with you, but you're gonna notice something a little different. So if you're using a really thick yarn like I am right now, this is going to be a lot harder than if you were working with just a regular yarn. So like a medium sized yarn. So once you get to here, you're going to work the stitches in the order that they are on your hook. So you're not skipping anything, but you have to work slowly because on this part, you tend to lose some of those stitches. So two tend to come out at a time. So pay close attention so that you don't skip any. So let's see, it's yarn over and then we pull through two. So there we go, yarn over, pull through one, and then two, yarn over, pull through one, and then two, yarn over, pull through one, two, one, two, one, and two, and there we go. Now the rest of the row is really easy. So you can work that pretty quickly. Oh, there you go. But yeah, when you're doing that, that crossover stitching, sometimes you, you need to help yourself out a little when you're doing that return pass. All right, so there we go. So you're probably looking at this and going, what did I just do? Okay, don't worry. It's really not as big of a mess as you think it is. So let me pull this hook out real quick and I will show you. So if you look at this knot thing, if you separate this part right here, you're gonna notice that there's this big space. Now insert your finger into here, and there you go, look. You have three stitches right here, and then you have these three stitches back here. So it's really not as bad as, as it seems. I know it looks like a big old mess, but just hang on, it's not that bad. So again, use your finger to separate this out, and it'll make it really easy to see. So here are the first stitches that you're gonna work in the next row, and here are the other three stitches. So there you go. Okay, so now let's go with row number four. Now that we are no longer intimidated by this knot, let's move on. Let's start our row with all of our beginning stitches up until the braid. So here's this, this, because this is what, row number three, I believe? So for this row, on all of these braided stitches, we're just gonna work a regular knit stitch. There's no crossing, no anything. So work your stitches as they approach your hook. And here's this one. So these stitches are way over here. These ones are closer to your hook. So if you need to use your finger to separate this again, I normally do this, that way I can see my stitching. You just work a knit stitch into each of those three stitches. So that's why I had you use your finger to separate them so you can clearly see them. And now you have these in the front. So now you work a knit stitch, knit stitch, and knit stitch. See, that wasn't so bad. I get, I got really intimidated the first time I tried to crochet this and I worked on this gosh it was for hours because I saw this beautiful um, pattern for a just a cable but I wanted to braid <laughs> so, so working on this yeah I got stuck on this several times and I just kind of stared at it and went what did I do but see now once you get to this row it's not so it's not so intimidating all right now we just finished the rest of the row so we have two purl two knit one purl so purl Purl, and then we have knit, knit, purl, and you finish your last stitch. Remember that if you need the written pattern, it is available on the blog. So I guess I can't call it a blog anymore. It's more of a shop now. So you can check it out on the website. I just have to get out of the habit of calling it a blog. All right, so this return pass, as you can see, is a lot easier to work because now you don't have that crossover anymore. So you can work this a little more quickly. Sadly, because this yarn is still quite large and quite fuzzy, 
it still takes me a minute to complete my return pass. All right, there we go. So that was the end of row number three. It still kind of looks like a mess, but hang in there. It does get easier, I promise. Now row number four, we have to do the other part of the braid. So these three knit stitches that we've kind of been just working and not really doing much with, we have to work those into the braid. So now we're going to do this side. So we just completed this side. Now we're gonna work on this side. This side is a little bit different because while on this side we used our hook in front and we pulled our stitches over, for this side we can't do it on this, this side since we're working in this direction. So you have to pull your stitches behind these other ones. So the first set of three has to get pulled behind this middle set, which the middle set then has to be pulled in front. That might have been a little more confusing than it needed to be. but. Hang on, let's let's keep working and then you'll see it's really not that bad. So let's just start our first stitches up until the braid. So our purl, two knit, two purl. All right, and we're here. So here are, here are the nine braid stitches. This time we're going to skip the first three. So skip these guys and go to the middle three. So we knit the middle three stitches. So we have one, two, three, and then here are the ones we skipped. Now, just like how we did on this side when we had to use our hook, we're gonna do the same, but we're going to do it behind the hook. So that's why the last one, we skipped these first, yeah. Okay, just go back to the beginning and watch it. It'll make sense. But we're gonna have to do those same stitching right here in the back. Now with this one, I'm going to hold it kind of funny so that you can see what I'm doing, but it's a lot easier if you're holding this in front of you to just work like this and then just kind of twist your work this way. Um, but I have to hold it funny so that you can see it with a camera. Now you're going to notice that there's this loose yarn right here. You need to insert your hook in front of it. So between your hook and this thread of yarn in order to push this one down and hide it. So what are we going to do? We're going to hold our hook like this, go to that first stitch, and you're going to knit stitch and pull up your loop. Now go to this second one, insert your hook, there you go, and pull up a loop. There's two. And we'll do the same with this last knit stitch. So there we go. And notice we are now behind our Tunisian hook. So that's where we need to be. Now we're going to cast these stitches onto this hook. So we're just gonna transfer them over. So just switch your hook over, move all these up here towards the top, and very carefully pull your loop off of the regular hook and put them onto the Tunisian hook. There we go. Remember to tighten that last stitch. And now we have the three stitches on this other side of the braid. So these we just knit stitch. So we've got one, two, and three. And then you finish the rest of your row. So we have purl, purl, knit, Knit, sorry, if you hear that tapping, it's my hook. It's tapping as I work along. Uh, and then we have purl. And our last stitch of the row. There we go. We're set. Now we just have to make our return pass. So this one again is gonna be a little, you gotta work a little slow, because once you get to this big old blob right here, you're just gonna have to work slowly so that you don't skip any stitches. Anyway, work your return pass. I'll finish mine and then I'll see you again in just a okay, moment. Okay, so here we go. Once you've finished your return pass, you'll have this big old knot thing. I don't know what to call it. This big old mess. It's gonna be the same as the one that you did on this side, so don't be intimidated by it. Remember that there is this little space back here and you will, if you use your fingers, you can see here are your three stitches in the front 
and here are your three stitches in the back. So we're going to work another row. So this is the last row. So this is, I think, row number five. So this is the last row of our four row repeat. And it goes like this. Our first little border stitches. So we have our purl to knit to purl. There we go. And now here's our braid. So remember to work the stitches that are closest to your hook. So if you notice, these this set of three stitches starts back here, and this one is closest to your hook. So cast on your knit stitches right here. So we have one knit, two, and then three. There we go. And now you work these back stitches. So we go one, two, and three. Now we go to these on the side. So one, two, three. And now we work the last edge of our scarf. So we have pearl, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, and the last stitch of the row. And now all we do is work our return pass, and there you go. So that is, as you can see, it just, it just takes about four or five rows before you actually start to see the pattern, and then you just repeat. Go back to row number two. So repeat from row number two onto this row, which is row number five, and then just keep on working. So your work will start to look like this after a few rows, and you're gonna be able to clearly see the braid and all of this stitching, so you won't have to think about this part anymore, and this becomes a lot easier. So remember that when you're doing, so what would be row number, what, six? Would be this side of the braid again, so you'll have to hold your hook in front of your Tunisian hook, so your regular hook goes in front, and then you loop your, um, the middle stitches in front of this last group, and then you do a regular row, so you just work straight across, and then you're gonna have a row where you have to hold your hook behind your Tunisian hook, and then loop those through the back. So it's one through the front, and then a regular row, and then one through the back, and then regular row, then one front, regular, back, regular, until you finish your scarf. But that's all there's to it. Like I said, it's not a very, it's not complicated, you just have to try. So practice it a little bit, I highly recommend you start with a thinner yarn first, so give it a go. I would try, you know, just any medium sized yarn, anything between a five millimeter to a six millimeter hook will work just fine. Just give it a bit of a practice. It's a lot easier with this yarn than it is with one of these thicker yarns. So give that a try, work a few rows, a few repetitions of row two through five, and then you'll be ready to make a nice large scarf. It didn't take me very long to crochet this long scarf. It, just a couple of hours. Um, you, you could just watch a movie and, and complete this. But I did want to provide a, a Tunisian crochet project, especially for all of my advanced crocheters out there. I know I do a lot of beginner projects, but I have a few people that have requested uh, something a little more complex in Tunisian. So here you go. This one's for you guys. I hope you really enjoy it. Give it a go and let me know what you think. And do stop by the website to get a PDF copy of this pattern. It is an instant download PDF. So once your purchase is complete, you have access to your pattern and you can immediately download it, save it, print it, do whatever you want with it. That is available on the Mode Bespoke website. You can also shop for yarns and any of the other materials that we've used in this video tutorial. So any of the hooks, yarns, needles, anything you need, you can find that on the Mode Bespoke shop. I will leave the link in the description box below. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them down below. If you've enjoyed this video tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it. I love it when you guys do that. And that's it. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you all again in the next tutorial.